Hello, I'm Don Bauer, and today I'm going to give a review of the Fuji S5 Pro, which I've got here. Um, and to give a review of it, I'm going to compare it against my other camera, the Nikon D300. Uh, so we're ignoring the lenses that we've got on. At the moment, I've actually, on my S5, this one here, I've got the camera body armour on it just now, so you can't see very much of it. Um, so if you just give me a minute, I'm going to take that off. Now, to take off the body armour, I also have to take off the lens, so this may take a minute. Right, okay, I uh, can't quite get the body armour off without taking off the straps, uh, so that's going to take ages. So, to talk about it, let's give a little look at it. So, the back of it, it is pretty much identical to the Nikon D200. And D200 and D300 were both very similar cameras. So, what you might notice is the... Anyway... The screen is a little bit smaller because this bit is saying Nikon, so you're actually having that much of a screen. Um, you know, with this one, you have nearly all of it, so it's a bigger screen on the D300. The, some, some of the specs of it is that it's considered a pro camera, so it doesn't have its auto menu. Uh, it's also got the bracketing button there, so if you're wanting to uh, do an exposure bracketing of three, uh, five th or seven images, let's see. You just hold down that button and then up here it gives you the options which if you rotate the dial, let's so there's two or there's nine, nine that it can take. Anyway, uh, that's of minor importance. It's the same stuff as what the Nikon can do. Uh, battery life uh, is pretty pump compared to the D300 but you've got to remember the D300 has an amazing battery life. Uh, this one uh, I just had at a wedding and it actually survived the whole wedding and it took around about 400, 400 450 photos with this camera on one battery charged um, which is fine, and it sold enough uh, battery for me to upload all those photos. The Nikon D300, I did about another 600 uh, photos, and uh, that one still nearly had half a battery left. So that that's, it, in comparison, it's not as good battery-wise. In terms of uh, resolution, it's 12.4. Um, again, that's not really important. Anything above 6 megapixels, I think, is fine. The ISO goes up to 3200, which uh, again is really impressive. The ISO uh, grain that you get on your pictures is not as good as a D300. But what you're buying this camera for, okay, what are you actually buying this camera for? You're buying this for its dynamic range. Um, inside the camera, it has a special sensor which is actually only taking 6 million pixels. And it does a thing called interpolate, interpolate, in, I can't remember how you pronounce it. But anyway, it gets all 6 million pixels and then kind of makes them bigger, so it's a 12 million pixel uh, image. And what it has, it has two, going into details, photodiodes, which are the tiny little, kind of like the pixels on the sensor. Uh, and they suck up the light. Two pixels, uh, one the small one, uh, which is one of the is a big one. So if, uh, uh, if it's bigger, it can suck in more uh, light and it can uh, make a brighter image of the high right. So with it having a small... Uh, photo dyes and the big photo dyes, you uh, have the ability to capture a wider range of, of image, uh, of, of uh, dark to bright of tones. And it, it says it can take up to 400% more. Uh, what it really means is if you're shooting on a bright day uh, with their Nikon D300, D200, uh, where the sky would normally be bleached out white, this one will be able to keep a little bit of that information in, especially if you're shooting raw. Uh, but even the JPEG files, uh, they keep a lot of data in. On the other hand, it means that the JPEG pictures initially straight at the camera are a bit flat, uh, a bit dull, but that's because it's got so much information in them that once you put them into an editing software, you can make it much more, more interesting uh, that way. It's also got, uh, in its JPEG function, it's got a number of film 
simulation modes. So it can do it all the way up to uh, Velvia, uh, which is a film that it used to use, which was really kind of saturated uh, colours, you know, so deep dark blacks uh, and very like uh, bright blues and greens and everything. Uh, which is quite cool if you're doing uh, some product photography or something like that. Uh, and also quite good if you're doing outdoor uh, weddings where you want to get a nice green grass, blue sky, stuff like that. Um, that it, it works good. Uh, and also for some portraits, maybe not the Velvia ones, but the other uh, film simulations uh, are, are equally good. Uh, I think it's very very good for portraits. In fact, I did uh, one of my other videos, which are probably below here, uh, I did a, a video shoot for a makeup artist and I pretty much all the uh, portrait photos that I did of the people was with this camera because it's, again, you're really going down to microscopic differences, but the tonal gradations uh, in skin textures and uh, skin colours, uh, it's just that bit better with this. Uh, the Nikon D300 is a fantastic camera, I'm not denying it anyway, but it's just that little, maybe 10% better for portraits uh, in this camera, which I really, really like. It's not great for fast frames. Um, the Nikon D300 is, is out of this world. It can do eight frames a second if you can get the batteries to be working right. Um, with this one, it can barely do two or three frames a second. In fact, so if I put it onto uh, continuous high there and then let's listen and I've got it on manual and that's the memory card completely full that was on uh, on JPEG large fine and that's it completely full and it's going to take ages for it to put all that information into the memory card so the buffer in this is not as good as the Nikon D300 in fact for an example D300 put this onto high get it at the same speed and let's see how long this one goes for. Now it's starting to slow down. But still, it's able to push that information into the memory card a lot quicker and it's still keeping up a very high speed. And that could go on forever. I don't think that's going to stop. Um, and now this one's just finished uploading all those uh, pictures onto the memory card. So battery wise not as good, um, the, the speed is not that great, but if you're in a studio, if you're doing portraits, you're not needing fast action shots. The Nikon D300 sports. This one, weddings, outdoors, portraits, landscapes not so much because the details aren't really in the 12 million pixels. So if uh, if you're really wanting a, a, a good camera for landscapes, I would actually recommend the Canon uh, D whatever, pretty much all the Canons are, are very good at, at landscapes. Uh, this one is not so great um, for landscapes. I would say this is really used for portraits. The other thing is price-wise, this is a lot cheaper now. This was going around about the £1,000 mark. Uh, now. Uh, I think it's almost about to be discontinued, so the price is getting dropped a lot. It's down below £500, so that's half price, uh, and that's when I got it. Oh, the other one, one other thing is the battery. Uh, as I said, the battery life isn't as good as the Nikon. It's also annoying because it looks exactly the same as the Nikon one, but it's ever so slightly different voltage, which means if you put this if you've got a Nikon and you've got this Fuji and you put this uh, battery into the battery charger for the Nikon, you're going to bugger up your uh, uh, your battery. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So you've got to be careful about which battery. And also these batteries never come any cheaper. Uh, so that's a bit annoying. But otherwise, brilliant camera and great for doing portraits and studio stuff. Hope that helps. Cheers. Bye.